The catering tent is full of lifer road crew, and these are brave men and women who sit suspended above the ground, building all of this at great risk. People do fall, they do break their necks and their spine, and they crack their pelvises, and these people are at the site at like three in the morning, dangling from a rope with a wrench in their teeth, screwing something into place, so some band get on stage like, we really don't want to be here, man. <laughs> but at three in the morning, in the dark, someone is building the damn thing and someone is taking it back down again. And when these people eat, they don't eat, they feed. And to see these amazing Viking men with the braided beards and pierced, uh, pierced eyebrows eating an entire side of a cow. And you see these huge breasted Wagnerian sopranos with blonde hair and horned helmets turning like cows around and around on, on, on flame to, to feed the thing that makes rock and roll really work. And these men are so alpha, they don't even communicate in words. It's like, ooh, boo, ooh. As, as they saw into meat with their sabers, drinking meat out of horns and grog out of tankards. And like, argh, and the bow walks into the catering tent, and you hear you know, armor plates shifting, and everyone stops, and ooh, 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 the bow. <laughs> and everyone stops because David frickin' Bowie has walked into the catering tent. I mean, he had everyone, like, and he, he rocked it perfectly. He stopped, and everyone's like, ooh, like, well, like, you know, half a deer tendon, like, flapping out of some guy's mouth. And he went, um, good afternoon. Uh, Carry on. And it went, ooh! And they went back to eating. And the Bo and I selected a few food items, and we sat down and we had this amazing conversation that took in literature, music, we talked about his friend and my hero, Iggy Pop. And, and so, yeah. I, you know, I, he's just one of my favorite humans on earth, and you know, those two made a few good songs together. And finally, someone told my bandmates who I was eating lunch with, and they all come running into the catering tent, huge smiles on their faces. They pretend they like me. Hey, Henry, who are you eating lunch with? I said, David, these are my bandmates, and he's very gracious. I'm David. They're like, shut your mouth. <laughs> They knew, and so at one point the bow finishes his meal and said, I, I must be off, and we're like, <laughs> and he left, and so I found his road manager, bodyguard mountain of a man named Big Charlie, like this impossibly terrifying guy, and I said, hey, Mr. Big Charlie, uh, is it possible my bandmates and I can watch the bow and his amazing band from the side of the stage, and he said, actually, David wanted to pass on to you that you all have been invited personally by the bow to stand on stage right where there is a full stereo front of house mix for our onstage invitees. And I said, damn, and we can do that? How do we do it? He said, when Mr. Bowie walks on stage, you run up the side of the stage and show your laminate to security, and if they give you any grief, tell them that Big Charlie says it's okay. And hours later, my bandmates and I, adults, come running up the stage, Big Charlie said we could be here, Big Charlie said we could be here. On the side of the stage and watch the bow sing for like two hours in front of 20 plus thousand people effortlessly. He just stands there and opens his mouth and the voice comes out pitch perfect. He doesn't sweat. He doesn't exert. He exudes. It was masterful. And people's like, ah! and the band goes into heroes and everyone says, ah! the most beautiful song I've ever heard. And they might be right. And so I can't tell you what to do because you're big, strong, sexy adults. But if you ever get a chance and you've not yet checked out the Bowie catalog, especially from Space Oddity to Scary Monsters, it is kind of relentless genius. It's freaky how good one guy and some great uh, musicians as well, obviously, can be. And if you are a Bowie fan and you haven't been able to bring yourself to listen to the Black Star record, he talks about his condition in some of the lyrics and the music is complex and amazing. His voice is amazing. Lyrically, it's it's 
brilliant. And it's a sad listen because the great man is gone, but it's a beautiful record. And I, I, I bought the vinyl and I haven't had the guts to play it yet. I, I've been off the road for 72 hours a few days ago and I'm looking at that record. I'm like, today's the day and I just can't face it yet because I miss the guy so much. But, uh, and I can't say I knew him, but I hung out with him for eight minutes, which was really cool. <laughs> but uh, for me, it's one of those relationships where the music has rescued me again and again and again and again. A long time ago. Uh, thanks. <laughs>